Hey Cloud Gamers, today I'm going to talk to you about Paperspace. Paperspace is a virtual PC company who specializes in machine learning, but they've also got this core module which has dedicated GPUs. It's the graphics cards that you need to run games. If you have a look at their site, it's an extremely professional site, and this was actually one of the first cloud gaming platforms I ever reviewed just under a year ago, so I thought I'd revisit it and see how it's changed as well as putting some of the knowledge that I've gained to the test and seeing what I can get out of these rigs. You can see from the pricing, it seems quite cheap to begin with. The P5000 is roughly the Shadow Boost equivalent at 78 cents per hour. The CPU is not the best here, it's an 8-core virtual CPU and we'll get onto that in a little bit. Region-wise, this hasn't changed from last year. There's the three regions still. We've got California, New York, and Amsterdam. So you do have the East and West Coast US, as well as a European option. You can select between Windows 10 and Windows Server. You'll see that I had the Windows Server version selected here, and that becomes important later. When you do create a rig, if you do create one of these, make sure you select one of the normal versions of Windows 10. Otherwise, you won't be able to use your controller. You can see that I've selected the 78 cents an hour model here, the P5000. It is worth noting that you will need to request access to the P5000 or P6000, as they are not enabled by default. But usually the email gets authorised within around an hour. You will also see that the storage options are quite pricey. The default of 50 gigabytes at $5 a month is not going to be enough if you're going to be gaming. And if you want something relatively simple at 500 gig here, it's going to set you back a $25 monthly fee. That's before you start using your hours. Also shut down if you're going to be paying, you probably want to set it around an hour and you can have a daily snapshot, but the snapshot uses up storage space, so be aware. One of the nicer things is you can also set a public IP, which means that you are able to use Moonlight. So what does this equate to cost-wise? Well, if you go for that, 500 gig storage and you use it for roughly 10 hours a week then monthly you're looking at around $56 so that really does mount up when you compare it to something like Shadow Boost and even Shadow Ultra at $35 a month then comparing it to maximum settings and Firebox it doesn't seem that cheap. So what do you get for your money? You get a Xeon virtual CPU at 2.6 gigahertz and this has got the eight logical processors or virtual CPUs. Again this is not one of the best that we've come across although we're getting that Quadro P5000 which is the 1080c equivalent on the graphics card. If we run the Cinebench then for the CPU you'll see what I mean. This comes out at 1303 points and this was the best run. This is running the browser app for Paperspace, which is another advantage of the service, is it does come with its own browser access to the virtual machines. But you can see that that CPU is extremely low. Even the Shadow Boost one is up in the 1600 to 2000, along with the maximum settings 1080C. The 2060 rigs are up in the 3 4000s. Along with the browser access, Paperspace also has a dedicated app. And the app has a lot more settings in it than the browser version. But this is really still only good for remote desktop work. It's capped at 20 megabits per second on the graphics side, but it does come with a whole host of options, which does look fairly impressive. But most of these are not really relevant to what you want to be doing. The GPU acceleration is just the hardware acceleration, which is what you're looking for. More for on the Moonlight side and setting up some hotkeys. Really, you are going to be wanting to use Moonlight because that CPU is not great. Parsec's probably not the best option here. But with Moonlight, which you can see here is Moonlight on the right and the normal app is on the left. There is a marked improvement on the quality on the Moonlight side, although you don't see it as much on this image. When you get into games, you really do notice. So how does it perform in the games? Well, let's start with the hefty one of Cyberpunk 2077. And you will see that I've had to put this down to medium with some of the low settings here. And although on the surface it looks like it runs okay, we can see those frames per second dipping into the 20s and even lower in some cases. And you can still see that GPU in the high 90s most of the time. 
In basic fight scenes, we are getting around 30 frames per second, so it is playable for Cyberpunk 2077 without looking like a total disaster. We can see some of these frame dips as we're moving around, but quality wise, it looks okay. And if you did want to play Cyberpunk 2077 and you haven't got one of the virtual rigs or two force now, then this is a viable option. The big surprise here though is when I put on GTA 5. Originally I started on some lower settings and it ran perfectly fine, so I pretty much maxed out the settings. And at 1080p it handles it quite well here. You can see that we've got well over 60 frames per second and the CPU and GPU are not really that used. Even with the fast motion there we are seeing no tearing and also no major dips in the frames per second. When we come into the fighting, it actually plays extremely well and I went on to complete this mission quite happily without really realising that I'm running a virtual rig. So it really does depend on the game that you're going to be playing. Obviously if it's a more CPU intensive game then you are going to have some problems. But if you're running a more GPU heavy game, as you can see here the CPU is still only around 50% with the GPU going up to the 80s and 90s then it is a lot happier. If you can manage your storage you can keep that monthly cost down but you do need to be careful as soon as you go above 500 gig the price does escalate quite a lot. Overall paper space is still a viable option if you don't have access to any of the other cloud gaming platforms and you have the budget for the storage. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments below whether this is a system that you'll be using and if you do happen to use it there is a affiliate code in the description below. If you are able to use that it will give you $10 credit and will also help us to be able to test this in future. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest across all cloud gaming platforms and we will see you next time.